Welcome back to Library 21C's Introduction to 123D Design. Uh, in this video we are talking about patterns and the very many cool things that you can do with them. Uh, now at a basic level what a pattern does is it takes an object, either a solid or a sketch, and uh, duplicates it along a path or direction uh, that you input. Um, so up here we have the Patterns menu, and we have a Rectangular Patterns, Circular Patterns, Path Patterns, and Mirror. And we're going to go through all of these uh, using these little example shapes that I've plunked down here. Um, I'm going to start with just the first one here, and I'm going to create a rectangular pattern out of a cube, which is kind of our first basic thing that we can do here. We start by selecting Rectangular Pattern, and it wants a solid to be selected. Now, you want to be a little careful here because it does give you the ability to highlight faces um, and that's just not going to work out. A lot of the times you have to have the actual solid um, all selected. You'll see how the green glow is all around that cube rather than just around one of the faces. Uh, other times I tend to get kind of invalid operations when I don't select that whole solid. So I'm moving my mouse toward a corner uh, which gets the solid selected. And then I am letting it know that I'm going to select two directions for this rectangular pattern to extend. Um, and I'm going to select uh, this one right here and this one right here. And you'll see if I look from the top down, the arrows have um, followed the directions that I input. And then I'm going to drag these arrows out and you'll see that the cube gets duplicated. And there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, for each axis, you see that there is a distance that you can input. So if I know I want the whole pattern to extend 100 millimeters, I can just type that in. There are a uh, there's a selector that lets you choose uh, how many uh, instances of the duplicate you want there. So you can either do it by dragging this thing along, or you can just type in the quantity over down here in this box, uh, which looks to have uh, relocated itself. There we go. So I can put in a bunch of them, and they, they you can even make them overlap if you want. Um, if you want to adjust the number going up, you have to click this arrow uh, to reload this dialog with the different set of numbers. Um, and then there's also the ability to turn off individual instances of that duplication if, uh, if you don't want those specific ones there. So that's basically how patterns work, but there's a couple of other little tweaks that you can make. Uh, number one, when, when you saw me make the, the cube pattern, I was using uh, edges of that actual cube as my directions, but that it doesn't necessarily have to be the case. You can use um, any uh, two lines that are drawn on your grid, um, and they don't have to be um, 90 degrees either. A rectangular pattern uh, can, uh, can extend at an angle as well, and I'll show that here. Uh, so let's do a rectangular pattern with a sphere, which does not have any edges. I select these two directions, and you can see I'm able to stretch them out. Likewise, I can do this. I can use uh, two lines that are at an angle, and those will work just as well. And you'll see my pattern extending at a kind of angle like that. So those are a couple things we can do with rectangular patterns. The next useful pattern that we have here is the circular pattern, where a uh, solid revolves basically around an axis, um, whether it's an actual drawn circle or an implied axis, and uh, duplicates itself that way. Let's, let's give this a shot. I'm going to start with a circular pattern, and I'm going to click on my solid here. Then I'm going to say, okay, I want to select this axis, and I'm going to select the outline of this circle right here. And you can see by default it gives me three, uh, but I can bump this up. And you'll see it starts making a little, almost like a little sun pattern around that circle. Um, the other way that I can do it is instead of having um, all the instances of the clone uh, kind of at an equilateral spread here, I can uh, go over to this uh, dialog over here and instead of hitting full, I can hit angle and then I get an arrow that lets me extend almost accordion-like this pattern all the way around the circle but you can see I can just have it be halfway along it uh, rather than all the way along and then I can use my little selector here to uh, decide how many duplicates I want. Now you saw me do a pattern with a explicit circle 
drawn there. Uh, but I can also use just an axis like I have uh, right here. This was just a normal sketch that uh, here, let me just let me just redraw it so you can see what I did. I just drew a polyline right here. And if I were to do a circle pattern right now, it'll kind of go around like this. Let's go ahead and, and, and look at that. And I use this as the axis. And of course, if I turn my view, you can see that it's basically just kind of goes around the pole like that. Uh, so if I wanted to twist that, I would, uh, I would just rotate the sketch so that it's lying at a 90 degree angle and do the circle pattern around there instead. And it basically functions just like we saw the other one. But you don't have to have a full drawn circle uh, to do that. You don't even have to draw another uh, axis pole. So like, let's take a shape like this. I can make this into um, something like a fan. Like, let's say that uh, I take this and I smart scale it down. Oh, come on now. Here we go. And um, you know what? We've done uh, fill it. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it one of these edges here. Yeah, that looks good. But I'm leaving a little bit here so that I have, if you notice this edge, I'll look very closely at it, it's just a straight up line going upwards. And we can actually use that as an axis. Uh, so if I want to use a circular pattern with this, I'll select this as the solid, this line segment as the axis, and look what I'm able to do. Now I can just increase the number of instances that I have there and I create a uh, sort of fan-like uh, shape. So that's another option that is available. Uh, a lot of people ask me how you draw gears, um, and this is uh, pretty much the same technique that you use. You don't have to uh, have a, a circle or an axis drawn. You can just take any any shape with an implied axis and, uh, and do a circle pattern around it. Um, so let's try this. Revolve this solid around just we can even just choose the whole solid or or the uh, well not the whole solid but either this circular face on top or this uh, kind of side of the uh, of the cylinder and that'll work just as well and we just do that increase the count and we can create um, again just kind of like a starburst shape here I, I don't know if you would call it a gear you probably wouldn't want it to be uh, pointy around the sides, uh, but that's the same technique that you would use. Again, any any shape with an implied axis will work, even one that you've created through Revolve, uh, which we'll, uh, we'll show off in the, in the, uh, in the next video. Uh, but let's put down a cone. They don't even have to be touching. We just know that a cone has an implied axis at the center of it, and we can revolve this solid using just that face. Um, and increase the number of uh, things around it, so things don't have to be adjacent in order to revolve. Or sorry, not revolve, uh, to, to do a circle pattern. All right, um, let's look at path patterns. Now paths are basically just unfinished sketches. They can be ones that you draw like this uh, with polyline, and you just don't enclose it. And you can take something like this and extend it across using the path pattern. It wants a solid and then it wants a path and you just drag that arrow along the path. You can increase the number of instances and you can create something like that. Again, able to toggle specific instances out of it on and off. On a path pattern, pay attention to this little uh, dialog over here where you can choose between identical uh, instances or identical clones and uh, clones that follow the path direction, so clones that turn their angle according to the angle of the path, and you can see that uh, they are they are turning in the, in the direction that the path is also turning. This is a little bit more pronounced on a, uh, on a path that uses a spline uh, rather than a polyline. Let's try that. We can choose uh, this solid here, hit this path, and drag it along like this increase the number of duplicates. Again, you can just bump it up here as well, and we can have the path direction go like that instead. Now you'll notice there's, uh, you would expect these to be angled in a completely different way, and what I have found is that paths work best uh, when the, the face 
that that you want to uh, have facing forward is perfectly perpendicular to the path. So you're going to see a different effect when I turn this shape uh, in such a way that that arrow, you see, it's, it's almost 90 degrees from the initial direction of the path. So once I do a path over here, and I change the path direction, it's following the angle of the path a lot more smoothly and a lot more kind of faithfully to to the direction of the uh, of the spline uh, so try to have the shapes um, you know angled perpendicular to the path uh, so that their angles are kind of represented in, in the best way possible uh, and then you could you know use some other tool to join those or just leave them as they are what's not obvious is that um, whatchamacallit, uh, paths seem as they seem as though they demand a solid every time, you know, uh, if you if you try to just make a make a, uh, a sketch follow along a path like this, I'm going to select it, I'm going to go path up here, there's no opportunity for us to select a sketch here, it, it, it's wanting it's wanting solids all around, it won't even, you know, let me click on, on one of these sketches. Um, so there's kind of a semi-hidden way um, to to make uh, sketches uh, follow a path and that is by selecting the sketch first and you'll see the gear that comes up that brings up contextual uh, tools uh, like move. Uh, let's see, yeah, I want to move that up there. If I in, look in this gear well, here are some patterns as well, although they have a slightly different interface uh, from the other. So let's try a rectangular pattern. And you can see that instead of asking for a solid, it asks for a sketch entity, uh, which can be either the whole sketch, which you can choose by selecting all four of these, uh, of these sides, um, or even just three of them if you like. And then you pick the directions, which again are just, you know, any of these, and you'll see that I am able to, since I only selected three sides of it, I am able to pattern that just like I can with solids. The only difference is that instead of selecting the sketch and going up to the patterns menu, I had to select the sketch and go into its contextual uh, little gear uh, menu. So uh, you can circle pattern uh, some, some sketches as well. Um, let's try this. We all, we'll select the sketch we want to work on, we hit circle pattern, and now we select these three sketch entities, and then we choose this as the uh, axis. It wants a center point, but we can just choose, say it says it lets us choose a select sketch point or circular arc, we can do that, and bump up the number of them there, so that looks a little bit uh, more gear-like. Uh, there we go. So we can extrude that if we'd like. Uh, we can do uh, something more like a flower using this. Let's try, oh, I, I forgot my own advice there. i got to click the sketch first. And then do a circular pattern. The one thing about circular patterns is that um, the, the thing that you would like to duplicate around the axis must already be part of the, uh, of the sketch that you're, that you're using to define a center point. Uh, so let's try this. See, I'm able to do that. What I can't do is, um, you know, have something like, uh, like we'll just put down a random sketch over here. I can't have this oval revolve, sorry, circle pattern around the implied axis of this circle over here because they're not part of the same sketch. Let's uh, let's try that and, and see if I'm wrong here, but I'm fairly certain. Yeah, it's not it's not it's not letting me click this thing, uh, so that's that's not going to fly. It's got to be the the sketch entity you want to duplicate has to be part of the same sketch that you're revolving it around. You can choose uh, this dot here, this little white dot, and revolve a sketch kind of around itself and create an effect like this, um, but you can't revolve it around a different sketch. Now, that looks kind of neat there. All right. Uh, same thing with uh, this. You can revolve a, a sketch around any uh, point. I, I keep going up here, and I know it's going to be a hard habit to break uh, because that's just where I'm used to looking for patterns. But remember, you have to select the sketch, go to the gear, circle pattern, select the sketch entities, and then any center point you'd like. I'm going to try 
this little corner, see if it lets me, oh, no, nope. I gotta select the sketch entity again, there we go, that right there, now let me zoom out, and you can see they're all revolving around this one dot that I picked. So I can make an effect kind of like that as well. All right. Uh, one last thing is the um, the mirror pattern, um, which uh, there's a lot of different ways you can play with that one. Let's try uh, putting down a cone here and uh, a box right here. You can use the side of a solid or just a line as your uh, reflection plane. So over here we have the mirror, which is the last pattern in our patterns menu, and the mirror wants a solid, and then a mirror plane, which you can uh, choose like a face like this. Oh, see that one won't let me do it, and let me see if I can figure out why. It could be that I did not select the whole cone. Yep, that was the problem. That's a tricky one. Let's, let's look at this again. I'm going to go to mirror, and I kind of just haphazardly clicked right over here. But what I'm not doing when I click right here is I'm not selecting the whole cone. I am simply selecting uh, one of the two faces. I'm selecting the face that kind of revolves around like this, but I am neglecting to bring along the bottom face of the cone. So for that, again, I have to go near a corner and make sure, see the difference there? That the whole thing is being selected, otherwise you'll get an invalid operation. And then I select a mirror plane, which can be a face, or it can be, um, well, it won't let me select an edge here, so we'll just do the face. Let's try a different one. Let's try polyline. What happens if I mirror it across just this line right here? Select the whole cone, and choose this thing as the mirror plane, and you can see that it mirrors across like that. It kind of assumes that this is the orientation of the line. What's interesting about this is that even though this rod looks like it's just, you know, kind of a, you know, one-dimensional thing, um, you it does have kind of hidden data about it, where if you turn this thing 90 degrees like this, you know, it doesn't even seem like there would be any change there. Uh, but secretly there is, because if I then go and mirror it, now my mirror plane is like that. Ain't that crazy? You can also um, mirror an object across a uh, face that belongs to itself. Uh, so if I just wanted to, um, you know, create uh, another another cone kind of on the bottom of that, I can uh, hit mirror, hit the whole cone as my solid, select my mirror plane, and make this my mirror plane and double something across itself like that. As I mentioned before, these patterns won't work on a sketch, but you can select the sketch, and here is the mirror version, uh, the sketch version of the mirror pattern found in the under the gear menu. And we're going to try, try that, and we're going to re uh, reflect this sketch entity right here using this axis as the mirror line, and there we go, a, a perfect um, perfectly reflected heart, uh, unlike my, my previous bad sketch of it that I did in the, uh, in the sketching video. And then I can just come back and, uh, and trim this thing if I want. So there we go. I think that about covers um, all of the different things that you can do with patterns. Uh, later on I will have a video on how to use patterns as well as some other tools uh, to make uh, like a threaded screw. Uh, so that's one more application that, that you can look out for. Uh, but other than that, you pretty much know everything you need to know about patterns. Go ahead and uh, get creative with these and, and see what kind of things you can pull off. So we'll see you in the, uh, in the next videos where we will talk about um, uh, sweep and revolve and possibly loft. But loft might be a video of its own. We'll have to see. Uh, we'll see you again soon.